Alrighty, so we've got a Revolt here. This belongs to uh, Jeff over here. He's going to give me a hand with this, but he's gotten his 25 hours in his Revolt now since he's uh, soloed. Yes. He's been flying like every chance he gets. And so anyway, uh, what we've done is we've warmed up the engine and uh, you don't want to do this with cold oil. And it's very important that we burp the engine. So if you come over here and listen and watch, I'm not turning the prop quickly but you will hear it burp. I heard it. Yeah, there it is. So now what we've done is we've gotten hopefully more of the dirty oil into our canister. And so you don't have to use a hose, but this makes it really nice. You can use a milk jug. What we're going to do is just go ahead and put this hose on our Curtis quick drain. And then we're going to just drain all the oil out. And if you don't have one of these on your aircraft, you need to get one. So this is a whole lot easier than uh, having to cut safety wire, replace a crush washer, then torque it again, re-safety wire it. It's uh, just this quick. And so this will take a few minutes. We're gonna just let that lay right there until the oil canister is completely empty. Very important now that we're not gonna turn the propeller. So this, if you turn it, you could introduce air into the oil system and we don't wanna do that. On the Revolt, we make a special wrench. Uh, this works really well. Um, the new style, oil filters versus the old style oil filters. Uh, the new one has less sides. And this is our first time, so we may have to adjust things. You see this uh, hose here is just a little bit tight and uh, you may have to pull it out of the way a little bit, but you put this on like so. And now we give it a turn, just that easy. And I'm not gonna loosen this all the way up because I don't have anything underneath the oil filter just yet but if it does drip there's nothing underneath the oil filter we're gonna leave that on until all the oil is out of the canister and go ahead and pull our dipstick out if we've got a rag we can go ahead and wipe that off and uh, we're using the, uh, the AeroShell Sport Plus 4. Uh, on most aircraft, it'll take uh, upwards of three liters, and these actually come in liter size. Uh, on a Revolt, you're gonna use about two and a half. And you're gonna want to, and there's the end of our oil. You see it bubbling out now. And just like that, now we can add oil to the system. And we're gonna go ahead and do our uh, oil filter change first. So I'm going to transfer our oil pan underneath the oil filter. Now because I loosened it up with my uh, wrench, I should be able to do the rest of this by hand. And you may want to make sure that you've let the oil cool down enough that uh, it's not going to burn you because you are going to get a little bit of oil on you when you do this. There you go. So we're going to just slide this over to here. One of the beauties of the Revolt is the fact that you can just get to things. So here's our oil filter, taken off by hand, centering up our oil pan, catching any oil. Okay, and now we're loose. See that just all drips straight down. And then this comes right out the bottom here, like so. And we'll go ahead and set that aside. And now it's time for our new oil filter. And if this line is catching any oil, it can cause it to run off a little bit. There we go. So, I'm gonna just let that go ahead and drain and we're gonna put a new fresh filter on it. 
Alright, so we're going to use a genuine Rotex uh, oil filter and there are other oil filters made that are out there that will fit. I know for a fact this has a check valve in it, it's very important on these dry sump engines. And uh, you know, I just know if you use OEM, you usually can't go wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to dip our finger in the fresh clean oil and we're going to lubricate the o-ring and that's to help it kind of slide on and now we're ready to come on up through the frame and into position and basically once it makes contact if uh, we look at the book I believe it's three quarters of a turn past contact so we see the green dot we're gonna bring that green dot around to about here and if I have to I can use a uh, the oil wrench typically maybe hard to reach in there so we use the oil wrench so we use the oil wrench we can just help it along try not to take any paint off the uh, the new oil filters we do this just bring that around and that's about it right there I actually made contact sooner uh, I'm feeling tension but take a look at what the manual says for torque or uh, exact uh, tightness on the oil filter but uh, that is good and tight you don't want to crank it down uh, but you do want it good and snug now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add we're gonna start with two and we're just gonna dump that in make okay, so we're gonna add two bottles to start and then I'm going to just kind of guess <coughs> at about another half remember I can always release a little bit of oil very easily out of our Curtis drain or I can certainly top off but the next step is I'm going to turn the propeller by hand and we're not necessarily trying to turn it quickly uh, a lot of people think you know hey just use the electric start you'll be just that much more efficient at turning the prop but we actually want to turn it slowly to get the oil system primed so that when we start up we want to see oil pressure within 10 seconds on the gauge so coming on over here to the prop making sure we turn it in the correct direction nice and slow bring it nice and slow through that compression And if you're using one of these E-Prop blades, you may want to use gloves. The trailing edge is very sharp. I'm actually gripping the blade more than I'm pushing on the trailing edge. And definitely don't slide your hand if you're pushing because it will actually uh, uh, do damage to your skin and even kind of not cut all the way through, but you'll look the next day at your hands and wonder what happened. And then you'll remember what you were doing the day before. And so about the same amount of turning as before we did the oil change to get it to burp is about what I'm going to be looking for. And I won't know if we've had any success or if it needs a little bit more turning, but just a guess. So that's about it right there. Now I'm going to come back over and we're going to check our dipstick. Anywhere on the flat spot is probably okay for right now. I'm gonna clean that off. So that's our flat spot. Anywhere here should be okay. Drop it in, pull it out. And unfortunately on these new engines, very, very difficult to see the oil. Now, after we do a couple of oil changes, uh, the third or fourth oil change, the oil will start to have a permanent color and you'll be able to see the oil. I saw it drip off the flat spot, so I'm fairly confident that uh, we were correct in the amount of oil that we added, but we're gonna check it immediately after we start the engine and before we go ahead and fly it again. 
Now I'm gonna turn the aircraft one so the propeller blast is not going to blast anything wind sensitive and also two god forbid i start up in the engines at full throttle for some reason i want to make sure i have runoff so i'm going to turn this trike that away Another little tip too, um, especially after you've done an oil change, spark plug change, you name it, you really want to look around, make sure you didn't leave the oil cap on top of the muffler. Um, just kind of look at the parts that you had contact with. Make sure your oil filter wrench is not hanging off of your oil filter before you start the engine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seat, seat belt myself in. And I remember this is Jeff's plane, I can't reach the pedals. Because we have a keyed magneto, when I wanna turn the engine over, it's gonna wanna start. So the trick to doing this is I'm gonna reach behind me to the rear kill when I turn the engine over with the key. Otherwise, it's just gonna start because my magnetos are on the key itself. So, it's a bit of a stretch, Here, but I've got my hand on the kill. Let me come around and show that. One hand on the kill, barely. The other hand on the key, and we're gonna go ahead and turn it over, clear prop. All right, and you don't want to crank an engine for more than 10 seconds pretty much ever, unless the spark plugs are out. We're gonna give the starter motor just a few seconds to cool down. I'm gonna switch over to a little bit of a bigger screen because I wanna monitor my oil pressure. So this guy right here, and I need this to come up into the green or give me roughly 24, 25 PSI before 10 seconds after the uh, engine has started. So here we go. Clear prop. And there we go. All right, now what we're gonna do is go check our oil one last time. How long does it take for the oil to settle in this in this engine before you check the level so it's not going to really settle um, you have to burp the engine to be able to get a again the accurate reading again so we're going to okay. literally burp it and then check it immediately after and watch your hand on the hot header now that we definitely got a warm i'm going to have you hold that be very careful about setting things down in the back seat it seems like a really great place to put things like gas caps but when you come back from an hour flight and you find your gas cap on the back seat and realize nothing was holding it in the whole flight. So never put anything on your back seat. If you must, put it on the pilot seat. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and burp. Again, same procedure. Now we'll be able to hear it this time. Before when I was priming the system by turning it, there wasn't oil in the engine, so there's nothing to hear. So we just heard it burp. Hopefully the camera picked that up. And again, it's going to, you really want to come out and go horizontal with it because it is so difficult to see the oil. Now that's dry. That's dry. Yeah, we're right about here. We're below the stick. So we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and top it off. So a lot of people ask, um, they're like, well, you, you're just running the engine with low oil. Your pickup, which is here, is like a straw at the bottom of a big gulp. So whether the oil is here or here or here, that straw is at the bottom. So all that oil in the tank doesn't exactly matter how much is in there when we're just running it. We weren't sucking air into the system. 
Whereas on like a car, the level of the oil is very, very important. It has a lot to do with how things get lubricated. But uh, we do want it at the proper height. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. And then we'll check that again. Who's got my dipstick? I've got it right here. And, and we've got plenty of oil. I think I may have picked up oil on the way in. Uh, down through the hole, so we're gonna try that one last time. Very difficult. It looks like we've got oil somewhere in this range. That first oil change is really tough to see the oil. So, best guess if the oil is a little bit high, it's gonna come out of our oil vent line, and that comes out right here, and you can see that oil has been coming out of that for some time. So when you do vertical steep climbs and things of that nature, um, the oil level does change in there and it'll spit oil out. A lot of people think that they're burning oil on these Rotax 912s in between oil changes. And truth be told, if you're climbing out with steep climb outs and that kind of thing, you're probably just taking good fresh oil right out the vent and away. So it'll more or less self-regulate if you are just slightly high or like I said we could drain it but I can't see the oil except that it's up the dipstick and on future oil changes it'll be very obvious uh, once it has a better tint. All right last but not least go ahead and put your oil cap on make sure it's nice and secure and that is how you do an oil change on a revolt. Thanks for watching.